Hey guys, this is Amy with Stick With The Plant and today I'm answering the question, how do I hear from God? And you might also learn how to fix your refrigerator. Stay right here. Thanks for joining me. You're in my kitchen today. We are tackling the subject, how do you hear from God? How do you know that's his voice that's speaking to you? You know, I've heard it said, you know, many times he's not in a spectacular way, but it, it's a still small voice on the inside. And as many times as you've heard that, it seems like when you're in a pinch, when you're in a struggle, I'm looking for a big loud voice to help me. Well, the other night, this refrigerator, it, it felt like it was dying. <laughs> when, the, when your milk gets warm and nothing in here was, uh, felt very cold, I thought, what am I gonna do? We, all of our appliances have decided to die at the same time. We have a new washer and dryer, a new dishwasher over here, and I thought, oh my goodness, my husband Jay is gonna freak out if the fridge dies too. <laughs> So I asked the Lord, Lord, I don't want my fridge to die. You know, help me. So I, I was just praying one night and, and I heard on the inside, the Lord said, why don't you clean out your freezer and get the ice because our ice maker was broken in it and left all this ice down at the bottom that had frozen that bottom basket there. And he told me, clean it out, take all the stuff to the deep freeze out in the garage and get in there, get all that ice out and your refrigerator will start working. I thought, no, that can't be God. <laughs> and I just kept praying. I don't think God said that. And then I Googled a couple hours later. I said, I'm just going to Google it. What do you do when your freezer is cold and your fridge is warm? And they said, why don't you defrost your freezer so the air can flow? It's taking that cold air from the freezer over to the fridge. And I thought, that's exactly what the Lord just said. I mean, it was the same wording that I heard in my heart was <laughs> what Google said. I thought, wow, well, okay, I know what to do. I've heard it twice now, I, I better listen. So I got in this, I opened up this freezer part, I cleaned out all of this food. I saw at the bottom, oh, there was so much ice. I mean, it was thick ice. So I had to get out my uh, hammer. I have my own toolbox now. You know, tools are never around when you need them. So I decided I'll get my own box. I found a screwdriver. I had my hair dryer out. I put it on the shelf above the, all the ice and I began to just <laughs> pick away. I was sweating in there. I turned that side of the freezer off. The hair dryer's on me. I'm in there. I'm chipping away at this ice. And I, I mean, it felt like I got five buckets of big ice chunks just came out of that. And when I listen to that voice, you know, that the Holy Spirit, he's a genius. If we'll listen to him, he'll make us look really smart. When that ice came out, the air was able to flow from the freezer right into the fridge. So now this part of the refrigerator is cooling. But Lord, forgive me for not listening. How many times in our life have you heard that unction or, or gotten that little nudge in the spirit? And if we're not careful, we'll ignore it. We'll think, oh, that wasn't God. And we'll keep on going. What if we lived our life expecting he was going to talk to us? You know, I was looking in the Old Testament there with uh, 1 Kings and 19, and you have the prophet there, Elijah, and he's trying to hear the voice of the Lord. And, and you've heard this before, but he said the Lord told him to wait for his voice there. And he was looking, a great winds came, the earthquake came, a fire came. But the voice of the Lord was not in those things that were so loud and spectacular, but it said the voice came in a still, small voice he heard from the Lord. It's the same voice that told me how to fix this freezer. We should begin to recognize it. I was driving one day and uh, the Lord showed me just like a mini vision in my heart. There was a car in front of me. It was a big truck actually. It had a sofa with a rope tied. And the Lord just told me, he said, now that rope's gonna break. The sofa's gonna come out in your lane and you're gonna get over in the shoulder. I mean, 10 seconds later, the rope broke, that sofa fell out in my lane, and we're going fast, probably 55 or 60. I was able, I knew exactly what to do. I slid right on that shoulder, and I, I, I bypassed the trouble. I didn't have a wreck, I didn't hit the sofa, praise God, who knows what would have happened. I, I knew exactly what to do by an unction, by a leading of a still small voice on the inside. Look at the book of John chapter 16 and verse 13. It says that Jesus was explaining the helper to us that he would be a spirit not to speak of his own will but to speak those things of the father to show us things to come that's what happened in my life the holy spirit's voice was there to lead me out of danger to give me a way out i'm so glad i listened that day 
I wish I would have listened faster about my refrigerator. <laughs> so today, don't ignore the nudge. Don't think that that's not the Lord. He's not speaking to me. It's that voice on the inside and it feels so peaceful. That's the voice of God. Don't make a mistake today. Judge him faithful. Judge him able to speak to you and lead you right out of the trouble. And that's all you'll stick with the plans he has for you. So glad you joined me right here in my kitchen. I just love hearing all that God is doing in your life. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing this. New friends are watching this because you're getting the good news out with us. We just love hearing from you. Thank you for the likes and all the loves. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're on Facebook, like this page. We'll have a brand new one for you next week. And remember, every Tuesday, we are live. I'll see you then.